Hello friends, this is Jim here with Science Talk and I have a report to share with you that uh, analyzes what's going on with uh, sea level. And some very sobering findings here. Now, most people live near a coastline somewhere, right? And basically what this report now is saying is that sea level rise could be much greater than expected or predicted. Just like the melt rate for Greenland, Antarctica, uh, and Alpine glaciers are faster than predicted, so sea level rise, it appears. Well, it makes sense. If the, the melt from the glaciers is going faster and they contribute to sea level rise, right? That, it makes sense. It kind of goes hand in hand. Melt the, the major ice sheets, it's going to go in the ocean. You know, water, solid state here, water and liquid state here. Right? So, um, so that makes sense. And this, of course, is due to the fact that it's not a linear function, but an exponential function. And then you throw in positive feedback loops, and uh, you get what we're seeing, not just with uh, glacial melt, sea level rise, but air temperature, you know, crop yield, etc. Anything you can think of result of manifestations of uh, climate change. So a team of scientists led by the University of Bristol in the UK has re-examined estimates of you know, the likely increases in the world's sea levels. And they're basically saying that the, their conclusion is that the figure could be higher than previous studies suggested. In an extreme case, you know, like to, sometimes you want to look at the two extremes and then use your statistical analyses to see where the 95% uh, confidence interval, 99% confidence interval, uh, places you. They say sea level rise over the next 80 years could mean that by 2100, the oceans will have risen by around 2 meters, roughly twice the level like thought likely till now. In other words, you know, they thought 3 meters, excuse me, 1 meter, you know, around 6 feet, it's two meters, three feet is one meter, roughly. So then I'm saying two meters instead of one meter. Okay. Other reports have said that if all of Antarctica and all of Greenland let loose, then we're talking 50 to 75 meters of sea level rise, in which case uh, humans are done for. Now, going back to 2013, the IPCC said that continued warming of the Earth with no reduction in greenhouse emissions, with sea levels rise between 52 centimeters and 98 centimeters by 2100. Now, IPCC, as I've said before, tends to underestimate matters. But this is 2013, in all fairness to them, so in the six intervening years, more information has come to light. Now, this new report was not published in the IPCC, but published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Many climate scientists have argued that that 2013 IPCC estimate of 52 centimeters was conservative. What a shock. The possibility that the eventual figure could be around double the forecast is indeed sobering. Now, the Bristol team used a different method, methodology to, to uh, attain their estimate. And they wanted to, of course, look at the effects of the ice melting in Greenland, the Antarctica, you know, West and East Antarctica, and so forth. And they used a technique called Structured Expert Judgment Study. This involved 22 ice sheet experts in estimating plausible ranges for future sea level rise caused by the projected melting of the ice sheets in each of the three areas studied. Do you, uh, under low and high future global temperature rise scenarios. In other words, you know, if the global temperatures increase by this amount, make an estimate. By this other higher amount, make an estimate, etc. If things continue as, as usual, the researchers say world seas will be likely to rise by between 62 centimeters and 238 centimeters by 2100. 238 centimeters, of course, is basically 2.4 meters. This would be in a world that warmed by around 5, de excuse me, 5 degrees C, one of the worst case scenarios uh, that was considered. 
For 2100, the ice sheet contribution is very likely in a range of 7 to 178 centimeters. But once you add in glaciers and ice caps outside the ice sheets and thermal expansion of the seas, you go over 2 meters. Now, you've heard me discuss thermal expansion. And this uh, was a statement by uh, the lead author, Jonathan Bamber, uh, of the University of Bristol. He continues, such a rise in global sea level could result in land loss of basically 1.8 million square kilometers, including critical regions of food production and potential displacement of up to, this is a conservative estimate, 187 million people. In other words, climate refugees will result. With temperature rises expected up to 2 degrees C, Greenland's ice sheet makes the single biggest contribution to sea level rise. As temperatures climb higher, then Antarctica starts becoming, starts making more and more of a contribution. When you, uh, Professor Bamber states, when you start to look at these lower likelihood but still plausible values, then the experts believe there's a small but statistically significant probability that West Antarctica will transition to a very unstable state and parts of East Antarctica will start contributing as well. Now, he said, but it's only at these higher probabilities for 5 degrees C that we increase that we see those types of behaviors kicking in. That's according to this research. Other researchers and other research papers reach different conclusions. But this is what science is. You do your best analysis, you have your debates, etc. Now, we've already increased 1.3, 1.4, so we're definitely not going to stay to 1.5 of the Paris Accord. We're going to blow past that very soon, and we'll probably blow past 2 degrees C probably no later, if things continue as they are now, probably no later than 2040. So, Will we see an increase of 5 degrees C by 2100? It's possible. What's the probability of that? Probably less than 0.5, but it's still possible. I think it's very likely, a very high probability of seeing at least a 3 degrees C increase by 2100. Some models say 3 degrees C by 2050, and others say 4 degrees C by 2100. So a lot of these worst-case scenarios may very well become the case. Globally important food-growing areas such as the Nile Delta will be liable to vanish as the sea levels rise, just covering them, disappearing. Large parts of Bangladesh, major global cities including London, New York, Rio de Janeiro, Shanghai would also come under significant threats, and the entire state of Florida. You know, seriously, the average elevation of Florida is like, what, 16 feet? Maybe less. Professor Bamba says, let's put this into perspective. The Syrian refugee crisis resulted in about a million refugees coming into Europe. They're talking 187 million. Where are you going to put them? How are you going to feed them? If less and less land is available for ever more and more people, something's going to give. I know I sound like a, a skipping CD here. I didn't say broken record. I sound like a skipping CD here. But yeah, this, this concept has to be driven home. Now, polar science is making excellent advances in understanding what's happening to Greenland and Antarctica. We're getting great new data, and so allowing for you know, uh, better analyses. New satellite measurements are able to uh, tell us, there it is, this is the ice loss that's happening. It's happening faster than the models expected. And then there's the a new hypothesis called the Marine Ice Cliff Instability Hypothesis. And basically this assumes that coastal ice cliffs can rapidly collapse after ice shelves disintegrate as a result of surface and subshelf melting caused by global warming. Subshelf melting, that's the warmer oceanic waters coming in and melting it from underneath. 
Now, the Bristol team uh, put the two meter rise at about a uh, 5% uh, chance of the sea level rise, but they do insist it should be taken seriously. Professor Bamber states, if I said to you that there was a one in 20 chance that if you cross the road, you would be squashed, you wouldn't go near it. 5% is one in 20. Even a 1% probability means that a 1 in a 100 year flood is something that could happen in your lifetime. I think a 5% probability, cranky, gotta love the Brits, I think that's a serious risk. If we see something like that in the next 80 years, we are looking at social breakdown on scales that are pretty unimaginable. I just did a video segment recently about the you know, that the possibility of human civilization may collapse by 2050. All these things coming home to roost makes this real possibility. Thank you for your time. Hey friends, this is Jim reminding you to subscribe and share my videos. Also, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I drop a video in. And I'm also asking to, for you to please support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your continued support.